Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. So you're very lucky this weekend, you're getting more than one Saturdays with Dad. Well, it's not Saturday anymore. It's now like extended weekend <laughs> with Dad. <laughs> As mentioned in the previous video yesterday, we are going to be talking about our favourite dramas. Now, this is going to be a bit of a hectic video because we've got a lot of crossover, but we've also got our own individual lists. So we're going to start with the individual lists. To you, Dad, what makes a good drummer? Uh, a good drummer has to fulfil both roles, but, but he is the foundation of which music it, uh, that we like is. So he must be able to keep the time perfectly. That's obviously the first kind of thing. Uh, also, he must be aware of different beats, where the music changes. In a way, um, I always look at a band, every single instrument with perhaps, perhaps the rhythm guitar, uh, are like all lead, are like Lord lead instruments. I mean, if, I mean, if you look at the keyboards, I mean Rick Wakeman or bass, Phil Lesh or or Les Claypool, or you know, they're just as much lead instruments as they are um, as as guitarists are, and especially so with drums. So. You need inventiveness. You need to know the background of different percussive instruments. Yeah. Um, you know, Get it's not just with it. and be creative. And it's not just drums; it's percussion as well. And percussion makes obviously a lot of difference. But basically, what we're saying is, being a drummer is being the foundation of the music, and it what it's what the the, the drums bring the song or the piece of music to life. That's a really, really good way of summing it up. I couldn't have put it better myself. So what we're going to do again is for each drummer that we pick out, we're going to sharpen an album that best shows their best talent, really. The yeah. best moments of their careers, in our humble opinions. So you yeah. can get some recommendations from that as well. Cool. So let's begin. The first one I'm going to bring with um, is Frank Zappa. Oh, Frank Zappa. Um, his music is so wonderful. The drummer that I think delivers his music the best, uh, Terry Bozio. <laughs> there we go. And uh, the album that we think what we like the most, that I think that epitomizes his different type of drumming and, the, and you know, the way he, you know, Zappa just changes time signatures the whole time and he just goes with it. Terry Bozio is wonderful, but we're going to have to do this conjunction album with Captain B4. And this is just a must. This is um, Bongo Fury. Um, there's a lot of great stuff on here. Um, Ebra Cadebra, which is good, Chased as Witch. But it ends with um, one of the great rock songs, which is just unbelievable The Muffin Man. Ah. It's not just Frank Zappa's guitar, but it's also Terry Bozio's drumming. He was an absolute pearl of a drummer. Uh, and I think this was the best album I think so as, as well. So and the it, live performances as well. Oh, right. Well, yes, they're, absolutely they're fantastic. Really uh, oh, that just, it, it's, it just sings this album. It's so good. So this is one of my favourite bands of all time. They are my top Spotify artists. Now, if you pay attention in my videos, you'll know who I'm talking about. Tool. Uh, I'm talking about Danny Carey of Tool. Yeah, just one of the best modern drummers out there, possibly the best modern drummer up there with, you know, Mike Portnoy and people like that. Um, but this album, I think, best shows his work. I mean, simply for Ticks and Leeches with that insane drum introduction and, you know, Schism with the uh, time signature changes. I mean, uh, Schism is one that we all know, so I don't really need to go on about that one too much. But more the deeper you go into the album, you know, things like Reflection and, you know, the patient and things like that. The actual title track Lateralis with the weird, weird funky time signatures. It's it's amazing. And it's a really, really cool style of drumming. It's it's mainly very in the lower frequencies. So definitely give this a try if you haven't yet. It's it's amazing. Danny Carey, one of the best drummers. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. And a Boston Celtics fan, by the looks of things. Yeah. Which is good. So I'm going to take you all the way back. Back, 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 back. I'll, I'll be here for the whole afternoon telling you the, the amount of hits and uh, music he's been on. He is, without doubt, one of the nicest people who I've actually chatted to before he sadly passed away. 
Um, and he is so humble and he was so nice to me. Um, and uh, he was just willing to talk. I mean, we didn't actually talk on the the uh, phone at all, but we just talked on Facebook Messenger. And, um, you know, he was his insight into the drum. He's a master of drummers. We, with Buddy Rich as a master, master of drummers. He is, of course, the late, great Hal Blaine. I have to say, it was, it's quite difficult because he's on so many brilliant albums, like Bridge Over Tribal Wars, there's a lot of the stuff with the Renettes and uh, Phil Spector. He's, he's drumming, he brought drumming into the new millennium. Uh, he was a part of the Wrecking Crew, and it's on the back of that the, the music that I love the most amongst a plethora of absolute genius is this one. My favourite album of all time. Oh, yes. Pet Sounds. Not to pull that one out, yeah. By the Beach Boys. I think this is uh, album 001 of our collection. <laughs> yeah, there was definitely at least zero, one of the zero, first. 001 of our collection. Well, uh, this is all about drumming, so I won't go on about Brian Wilson, the greatness of the songs and everything. Brian needed to have a person who he could trust unbelievably to impart his vision on Pet Sounds. And as much as Dennis Wilson was a really good drummer, great drummer, he's not Hal Blaine. Hal Blaine on this is just, from the beginning, wouldn't it be nice and the boom! You yeah. know, it's just, and off you go, you know? And and it's just everything. All the parts of the drumming, it's so subtle, it's so brilliant. It's it, He actually brought a huge melody to drumming Al Blaine. He was just an amazing drummer. Um, and so, you know, you can't do a best drummer of all time list without having Hal Blaine on it. And this is this is what we've chosen, isn't it? Yeah. Pet Sounds, The Beach Boys, with the magnificent Hal Blaine on drums. Okay, so my second pick of the day. Oh, where do I, where do I go from here? You know what? I'll go here, and you can talk about this one with me as well. Yeah. You'll, you, you'll know this, this drummer. Uh, he ended up fronting the band. I don't think I need to say anymore. Uh, we're talking about Phil Collins. Well, I'm talking about Phil Collins anyway. Uh, yeah, did you know, for all those people who um, aren't into the uh, older Genesis stuff, that Phil Collins was a drummer? Can you believe it? And he was a pretty good one too. And I think this album, Selling England by the Pound, is possibly Fantastic. the best way to describe, or the best example to give someone of how great of a drummer he was when he was still drumming. Mm -hmm. I mean, Indeed. Firth of Fifth, I think, is my favourite example to use because it has all the time signature changes. It has all that really, really nice structure to it and everything like that and the transitions into the sections and stuff like that. I mean, to be a prog drummer, you have to be able to do that kind of stuff. Would, would you agree? I mean, I'd probably say anything really from the early... Anything of the... the, the anything. I the mean, early Dan Genesis. Price, Diamond, Broadway, I mean, it's all catalog. good. It's just all good. You know, Nursery Crime, you know, Land Lies Down on Broadway. Yeah. He's just a fantastic drummer, Phil Collins. Uh, you know, just a little anecdote. When I saw them in Wimbledon in 1972, he was just just so into the drumming. The actual drum uh, uh, kit collapsed on stage, so they had to quickly rearrange it and get it done. And that's someone who gives it their all. Yep. Without that, any doubt, Phil and Collins. And that is so important in a drama. Great drama. Someone who can actually, who's actually cares about it, you know, yeah. who actually wants to put it all in for a good show. Dad, on to your next one. Uh, so I'm now going to go fast forward to modern era. Uh, you obviously alluded to Danny Carey of, uh, quite rightly, of Tool. I'm now going to bring two drummers up who played for the same band. And that is John Theodore on Francis the Mute and Thomas Pridgen on the Bedlam in Goliath. Let me go on to John Theodore first of all. John Theodore is one of, with him and Thomas Pridgen, two of the best young drummers about. On Francis the Mute, he does everything. He does the Latin feel, the jazz feel, the psych rock feel, the intense metal music that goes on in this. And, 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 it, and some of it, you know, really is just unbelievable that's a sign uh, of a good drummer Cassandra, being able to play different oh, types of music and cassandra gemini which is the big epic that ends the album which is one of my favorite of all time 
there's so much in there. There's so much type, so many types of rhyming. And John Theodore was just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Right. Played with Dead and Company, of course. But um, uh, but no, that's great. And if I go now just to out and I mean, when I first heard this album, I just went, wow. And it wasn't just Omar Rodriguez, Omar Rodriguez and Lopez and etc. Um, or any of the other guys uh, 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 at Mars Volta. It was a drummer. From the first track, Aberin Cooler, which is just, it just comes in and just bang. It just opens up, it's thunderous. And two, I mean, the other one I love is Goliath. Goliath on this, and he's just incredible, Thomas Bridgen. I mean, the, the Mars Volta, I mean, Omar and Cedric, owe a lot of debt to these two drummers that uh, basically made up the best of the Mars Volta albums. Absolutely. So these are two. So Francis Samute, which uh, John Theodore was on, and the Bedlam in Goliath. I love this album, which obviously Thomas Pridgen is on. Cool. So those two went hand in hand. But my next one could go for any of these. It's such a good choice. Right, you can help me on this one as well. Yeah. So, possibly my favourite band at the moment. Second on my Spotify, top listen to. And um, actually, a funny story. Me and my friends did a dress-up night recently. Of uh, You dress up as your top Spotify artist of the last six months. And this was mine. Pink Floyd were mine. And I dress up as Roger Waters. Although I ended up looking more like Geddy Lee. But that's besides the point. <laughs> we're not talking about bassists. But we will eventually. But we're talking. I'm going to talk about Nick Mason. I think this is the best example, and I'm mainly going to talk about also Live at Pompeii, which has that insane rhythmicness of it all, especially with the uh, Source for the Secrets title track and also Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun, which are two really great tracks to describe. And that is why I picked this album, because this I found that a lot of the early Pink Floyd stuff was so rhythmic based and more drummy based than it became yeah, afterwards. That's and a good point. I, I have no words. I, I, it, he's just such a great drummer. I actually almost forgot to put him in, event, um, in the list until I remembered. Oh yeah, I actually really like Pink Floyd. I really like this this guy. Um, but I think this is the best album to demonstrate because it's got all the, the really goodies, great, like rhythmic -y kind of stuff. And there's a lot of variation with the drumming, especially on things like Set the Controls is a very slow kind of, yeah, very building up kind of song. Yeah. And then you've got like the insaneness of the title track, Source for the Secrets. And yeah. then the first track as well, which is really great as well with all the great drum fills, Let There Be More Light. So this is a really great example. If yeah. you want to know why Nick Mason's such a great drummer, this is the album to go to, or just watch Live at Pompeii. And listen choice. to one of these days. I mean, I think that... that yeah, me, that would have been the second choice, metal. Yeah, metal. One of these days. Oh, Nick Mason's drumming in that is just amazing. Yeah, that would have been my second choice, but yeah. I thought Source for the Secrets had the best yeah, I variation. Yeah, there are probably more in there, but just, you know, you, you love a song and... and you love the drumming behind that song. It's just something about that song. It opens up um, metal. It's just the drumming. Oh. And the live at Pompeii version. And it's also a dangerous song because if you're driving, <laughs> you go from 80 miles an hour to 150 miles an hour. Which is not good. Which isn't good. So that was my next pick. Okay, Dan, on to your next one. Uh, next one is just a must for me. This is Derek Trucks' uncle, Butch Trucks namely the Allman Brothers, with him and Jai Johnson. I had a two drummers uh, set on here with uh, uh, these two guys who were just unbelievable. I can't really so much separate them because they, they put so much into the Allman Brothers uh, and they contributed so much. But I think it was more or less one of the first bands that had two drummers mm. uh, and both of them were just magnificent. And on this album, the Celestial, Stormy Monday, and the memory of Elizabeth Marie, which is wonderful. And the, the, the you know, the changes, the blues and the jazz that's with this. Uh, and um, also, of course, Whipping Post, which is just incredible. Uh, and, um, you know, Statesboro Blues, the big blues number with the Stormy Monday. This is a must for everyone. This is just such a great album. And it's not just Dwayne and Barry Oakley and all the, and Greg. But it's also Jai Johnson, oh Jai Johansson, uh, and also Butch Trucks that make this such a great album. 
two brilliant drummers top of their game. Very cool. Okay, so on to my next one. I've got a couple left in my own list here. I'm just going to show this. People already know what I'm talking about when they I They absolutely do, yeah. Keith Moon of The Who. Um, I, another one that I actually almost forgot to put in the list. Insane, madness, crazy, uh, out there, amazing. And that's just Keith Moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, just such a great album to describe. I mean, I've had a hard time picking which Who album to use because I like so many of their albums and I was trying to figure out which one I wanted to use, but I thought I'd just go with the safe choice. Opinions? Uh, well, yeah. obviously, <laughs> obviously, to me, Keith Moon's finest hour won't get fooled again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, is really that good. is just incredible. It's Keith Moon, it's absolute manic best. Absolutely. Um, we all know the, the stories of Keith and his, shall we call it extravagant lifestyle? Uh, yes, it, it's he, certainly interesting. <laughs> and, he brought that, and he brought that madness to his drumming. And but it, be under no illusion what a great drummer he was. It wasn't absolutely. all flashy. It yeah. was all there. It, it was, was all there. It was just absolutely. outstanding yeah. drumming. No doubt about it. You just want to get off and... Yeah. And oh, yeah. It's really great. Do Roger Daltrey's bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think I need to ask people to listen to this because you've probably already got a copy of it yeah. anyway. But if you haven't, definitely yeah. listen to it. Ginger, Jack, Eric. I could only think... You can think of one band. Yep. Cream, Disraeli Gears, Ginger Baker. Ginger Baker was an East Londoner who was brought up listening to jazz and migrated to the clubs in the West End. Uh, his formative years of, in drumming in the 60s with people like John Mayle made him the drummer that he was. He explored all different different avenues of drumming, whether it was like you know the British rock stuff or the American blues and jazz, or indeed African rhythms, which he was very much into. I don't know what it is about drummers, a nutter, like in not quite in the Keith Moon mold, but getting there. And um, there are stories about him actually pulling a knife on Jack Bruce uh, during a gig, uh, which sort of like sort of elevates him almost to quasi cult status but let's again like Keith Moon be under no illusion whatsoever Ginger Baker was a master drummer and I love this and on, on the Disraeli gears I just I, I, I love this so much our band Silly Lobster did a did a good cover of um, Sunshine, Sunshine of Your Love yeah. so if you check out the Instagram I hate to plug it but if you want to check it out you can go ahead and do that Okay, so on to my final one that's of my own list. Taking a bit of a more sophisticated turn uh, from things like The Who and Cream, uh, a bit more, how do you say it, precise, a bit more uh, jazzy. Yeah. And Robert Wyatt of Soft Machine, or formerly of Soft Machine. But what I find interesting is that with their, when I watched the um, Prog Rock Britannia documentary, which a lot of you guys have probably seen, he didn't really want to be a jazz musician. He wanted to be a pop musician, yeah. like a pop drummer, but ended up being part of one of the best jazz fusion progressive rock bands ever. This album, four tracks long, it's a bit like Tales from Topographic Oceans in the sense that all the tracks are extremely long, but on all those tracks the drumming is just immaculate. You know, it's it's jazzy. The improvisation, yeah. that's it. Their live shows as well, they can take the music and just push it to the next level by doing all the improv and experimentation and just taking it and just going on with it and being able to do that, being able to improvise along with your other band members, especially as a drummer, you have to be on it. You have to be able to carry that rhythm and be able to change it smoothly and not have it be all jaggedy. And I think that this guy, Robert Wyatt, really shows that as much as... A lot of the other progressive rock drummers but i think that he really is one of the master drummers and he doesn't really get mentioned in a lot of these top 10 drummer lists despite the fact he is one of the greatest drummers of all time yeah. or was one of the greatest drummers of all time and yeah and a great songwriter as well Bob oh or. yeah absolutely if you like that improvisation and the jazz fusion progginess of the canterbury scene check it out dad on to your next one uh, uh, my next one is uh, another sort of double drumming band as well at that time. 
Um, and it comes as no secret to all of you who I'm going to, which names I'm going to tell you. Live Dead, Terrapin Station. Billy Kreutzmann, Mickey Hart. The reason why I've chosen these two albums, not albums like American Beauty or, or um, Working Instead, is that Mickey Hart added so much to the dead. Mm -hmm. And that was when he was on his hiatus. This is Live uh, Live Dead. I don't have to tell you about Dark Star, but the 11, St. Stephen, the drumming, both drummers on the top of their game, and then the Dead Go Prog, Terrapin Station, one of the underrated albums of the 70s. Brilliant. There's the first side with Estimated Profit, but the drumming on the actual uh, second side, the uh, Terrapin Station uh, medley, is just incredible and so many different types of uh, time signatures going so you've got billy and mickey just going off in a half and it's just incredible incredible there is a good argument to say that blues for Allah, which is another intrinsically very progressive rock album it would be in there i mean the the the, the track on that uh, um the um king solomon's marbles is just like a santana track and it's such a it's just like that you know with billy kreutzman and mickey hart doing what Santana do so well, but overall, these two ones. This one for basically its progressive rock feel to it. For and the this, Prog Channel. Uh, for the Prog Channel, and this one here for its just out there psychedelia. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the drummers that are on both of our lists, because I thought it'd be easier just to talk about them together. Uh, maybe I've confused this whole video, and it's all going to be a big, big old mess. But, you know, editing exists for a reason. Let's start with yet another supergroup. Uh, possibly my all-time favourite supergroup. Keith Greg Carl. <laughs> yeah, Emerson Lake and Palmer. I chose Brain Salad Surgery for the best drawing. It's not my favourite ELP album, but I think it best demonstrates the... Yeah, Colin Evil. Yeah, yeah, that whole saga yeah. describes the drumming best. And of um, the ELP discography and it's not just Carnival you know it's it's all the little bits that come before that it's just all, t all, all really great Carl Palmer great drummer and you uh, have the pleasure of seeing them live and uh, unfortunately oh, yeah. oh, I did all over uh, unfortunately I wasn't around for that but hey I can't time travel but I think this is the best album to show off the drumming skills really yeah. But I do like, I think Tarkus is another great example as well, but I think this one's top separate. He's such a great drummer, Cole Palmer. There's, there's um, examples of his true excellence, probably on Love Beach, which I refuse to listen to. That's how good he is. But, you know, I, I agree with you, Neve. Probably his best uh, uh, performances were on Brain Salad Also, uh, the live album, Welcome Back, My Friends. Yep. That is also really great for the. That's great for all of them, really, but especially the drumming, because that was like the first thing I pointed out. No great, uh, greatest drummer list of all time is complete without the Brummy. John Bonham, Led Zeppelin, Possibly total genius. The most iconic drum sound you can ever get. Because um, you know it's a Led Zeppelin song. Absolutely. <laughs> you, know? you just. It's just by the drums. Just by the drums alone, you know it's a Led Zeppelin song. I choose this album of many albums of the Zeppelin where John Bonham has never done anything bad. It's always been brilliant. But because now you've got to dissect it more and go into, right, if it, all of his albums were so good, how would you pick it? You've got to go with the song as well. Yeah. And it's really uh, not um, anything to do with uh, Stairway to Heaven, the entrance to rock and roll. Black Dog, the beginning of Black Dog. But for me... When the levee breaks. When the levee breaks. The master of the drum introduction. Oh, <laughs> when the think. beginning of... And okay. It's just it's all so brilliant. What a way to an end, end an album. And it's not a cop-out to say that it's one of their best albums, because it is. But it's not it's one of their nice. best albums because of uh, the, the greatness that is Stairway to Heaven. 
But there's so much more Battle Forevermore. There's so much more in this album. One of the great album closers oh, of yeah. all time is When the Levy Breaks. And the reason, not Robert, not Jimmy, not John Paul, John, John Big old Bonzo Bonham. Okay, going back to progressive rock again. You didn't think we'd miss this guy out. And if you did, you're not paying Sadly attention. Sadly mistaken. Possibly my second favourite drummer of all time. Probably most definitely my second favourite drummer of all time. He's played with multiple of my favourite bands. This guy's played with Yes, King Crimson, even Genesis as well. Bill, oh yes, Bill Bruford. Bruford. And these two albums, I have to pick one from Yes and one, one from Yes and one from King Crimson. Close to the Edge, I'm, I'm not biased because it is my favourite Yes album, but the drumming on not just the large track, but the second side of the album, you know, and you and I, Siberian Kartru, outstanding. But I'd say mainly for the title track, the big track, Close to the Edge, the transitions of all of the sections of that track just smoothly run into each other and he's able to do it not just in the studio but also in concert sadly was not around to watch any of these concerts but i've seen him on youtube and it's just amazing and also not just you know close to the edge you know fragile as well and um the yes album you know everything he touches is great and that's why i'm also going to talk about red which is the King Crimson album. It's your favourite King Crimson It's my favourite King Crimson album and my second favourite album of all time. I'm going to talk about Starless, which closes this album. And the way the track builds up. It's such a dark track. And the percussion bit in the... After the vocals stop and the kind of the build up starts. He doesn't just start with, you know, it's builds and that's what makes him such a great drummer the master of that build up and being able to also make it worth your time as well so starless also just and, and the, you know fallen angel which is the second track on the album which is a bit less chaotic even then he makes it an interesting track not just a simple drum beat just going all out interesting it's all good as i said anything he touches it's fantastic and definitely one of the best drummers of all time and he makes them you need a good drummer to be a prog band you don't have a good drummer you don't have a prog band <laughs> moving away from progressive rock again um well is it um slightly. It's, there's a slight progressive feel to it but um this guy is just an amazing drummer not just with police but with so many other things that he's done we are talking of course of Stuart Copeland of The Police. This is the best album too. Uh, and we got, I mean, there's some great drumming. I love the drumming on Can't Stand Losing You. I mean, on this album, he's exceptional. Not just walking on the move, message in the bottle. And it, and it's, it is the instrument of The Police, I think. And that's no way denigrating uh, Andy Summers, who's just an incredible guitarist. But he is something else, Stuart Copeland. He is, he is a great drummer that was lost in the punk era. Made a lot of money with the police. They had lots of single success, but what a drummer. What a drummer. And what we're hoping, Neve and I, and this is a call out to uh, Les Claypool and Trey Anastasio, is for you three guys to get yourself together, get a plane, come over here and play an Oysterhead concert. Yeah? Uh, I would happily watch that. Yeah, and he's just one of the great drummers. He really is Stuart Copeland. We're going to talk about our favourite drummers now, like the f number one, because we both have a number one favourite drummer of all time. Here you go. So my top drummer of all time isn't going to be very surprising to anyone, because I think that this opinion is shared amongst a lot of people. Uh, Neil Peart of Rush. I know, it's <laughs> crazy. It's not like you've heard that one 110 times. But... These two albums, I mean, mainly for me, Hemispheres, uh, for that last track, La Villa Strangiato, as much as, you know, the bass is great, obviously, and the guitar is great, but the drumming, super, so, so good. And from the start of the album, right down to the end, you know, Circumstances is also a great one. The Trees, that's my favourite song on the album, possibly my favourite Rush song of all time. So with 2112, you've got the big track and you've got, you know, things like Passage to Bangkok and stuff like that. 
Passage to Bangkok is fantastic. Absolutely. So I would have probably chosen 2112 yeah. as well. Well, this is my favourite Rush album. And, I, and the reason why is because of how great the drumming is. And you can't really argue with Neil Peart being one of the possibly the greatest drummer of all time because mm. he just is. I would put Neil Peart in number two. Interesting. Yes. And your number one? Michael Shreve of Santana. This album is my favourite of all the Santana albums. And one of the re reasons is the exceptionally gifted drumming of Mike Shreve, who I consider, it's my humble opinion, the greatest drummer. I mean, Neil Peart is touching him so close, but this guy just nails it for me because he was he 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 was so young when he first broke onto the scene, and everybody who probably looks at Neve's uh, YouTube channel and subscribe probably know about the well as a nineteen year old his drumming and the Woodstock Festival on Soul Sacrifice yeah. will go down Those as do. one of the greatest greatest drumming experiences you'll ever see. He just carried it on from there. He just got better, if anything, got better and better, obviously, as he got older. But in Santana 3, the, the two song overture at the beginning, it's just fantastic. And the Latino bit of Guajira and, and Ain't Got Nobody to Depend On, which is a great number. Okay, he's backed up with, but with some fantastic musicians, not just Carlos, but Neil Sean, Greg Rowley, Jose Chupita-Arev. I had the absolute pleasure of seeing Santana with them live. All right, and that's cool. And he was memorable, as was, of course, the whole percussion section. This is my top, Michael Shreve of Santana. Very nice. And that is the end of the video. Now, this was a very, lo very long one, so I hope you have stuck around till the end. Let us know your favourite drummers. And I don't think we've missed anyone out. But again, this is our list. If we've missed out someone that you would put in your top 10 list, that's your opinion. Ours is just very slightly different. Because what would the world be if we all had the same opinions? Exactly. It'd be very boring. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.